This video is about osteomyelitis. Now in this video I will not be talking about how you know you can understand each and every osteomyelitis. This is more like how you can remember it, memorize it and differentiate it from other osteomyelitis. Okay? So so I would suggest that you grab a pen and paper with me and kind of exercise with me as I'm going through this. Okay? So are you ready with your pen and paper? All right, so let's get started. So the mnemonic that I have here is Pam naps. Okay, so this lady Pam with two P's is so tired and it's so sick from the osteomyelitis that she's always napping. That's how I came up with the mnemonic, right? Pam naps. So what does the first P stand for? Pyogenes. The next P, Pseudomonas. A for Staph aureus. M for Mycobacterium TB. N for Neisseria gonorrhea. The other A is also for Staph aureus. So notice that I have Staph aureus in two different positions, and I'll tell you exactly why I did that. P for Pasteurella, and S for Salmonella. One reason I had two, a two A's in two different spots is because I needed a vowel to make this work. But there's also another reason why I have put Staph aureus in two different sections. So let's get um, going in terms of what each one of these causes. I'm going to start with the A here. Staph aureus is the number one cause of osteomyelitis, okay? Number one cause is Staph aureus. So if you don't have any indication, and what do I mean by indication? If they're not specifying a certain cause of osteomyelitis, you are going to run towards Staph aureus because that is the most common, okay? So the most common is going to be Staph aureus. All right, so that's the first A. The second A is that if you have prosthetics, okay, if you have prosthetics, then you are more prone to have Staph aureus. So other things from where you can get uh, osteomyelitis from Staph aureus are heart valves, orthopedic implants. So these things all can give you an infection, uh, osteomyelitis of Staph aureus. Now remember that every time you have Anything with itis means inflammation, right? So osteomyelitis uh, is nothing but inflammation of the osteo or the bones, right? Okay, so there is one more thing I want to talk about Staph aureus. Oftentimes, another bug also causes osteomyelitis other than Staph aureus, and that is Staph epi, but it's not as common. Staph epi is often found in indwelling catheters. It can also be found in heart valves and orthopedic implants and prosthetics. So if you want to pick Staph epi, then you have to rule out Staph aureus first, okay? Because Staph aureus is the most common. You have to be absolutely sure that that's not Staph aureus. Only then you can pick Staph epi. That's why I didn't put it down in this list here, because it is not as common as Staph aureus. All right, so those are the two A's. Now let's talk about um, osteomyelitis that is spread hematogenously. Again, the most common is Staph aureus. It is also spread hematogenously. Okay. And what does hematogenously mean? It means that it's spread, it's spread through blood. Another uh, bug that is also spread through blood and that can also cause osteomyelitis is our is our um, strep pyogenes. So if you have hematogenous spread, you can either think strep pyogenes and staph aureus. But if you don't have any indication which one it's going to be, you're going to pick staph aureus because that's the most common. Yes, strep pyogenes also can cause hematogenous spread, but staph aureus is number one. It's the number one cause, right? Another thing I want to mention here is that if you have um, osteomyelitis from strep pyogenes or staph aureus, the chance of you having rheumatic fever and post epigrocal glomerulonephritis, all the diseases are greatly increased because the bug is in the blood. It's just a little bit step away from staph uh, uh, osteomyelitis, but I just wanted to mention that. Okay, this was a good spot to talk about it. So, anyway, so let's move on to the other ones. What about pseudomonas? What kind of um, situations is going to give you osteomyelitis from pseudomonas. So with pseudomonas the most common is going to be diabetics and IV drug users. Now if you have pseudomonas and staph aureus okay and you have IV drug users you're going to pick staph aureus because staph aureus um, can also give uh, osteomyelitis 
because in IV drug users, because of prosthetic, heart valve, implants, all those things can be also due to um, due to be can be greatly increased in IV drug users. So, if you have the choice of IV drug user and you have to choose from Pseudomonas and Staph aureus, definitely go for Staph aureus. But what about diabetic? If a patient is diabetic, you're going to pick Pseudomonas first over Staph aureus. It only makes sense, right? Because diabetics are more common in pseudomonas. Are you seeing my um, pattern? Uh, how I'm trying to build on these things? What is going to be your number one choice if a certain situation arises, right? It's very, very important here. So anyway, so those, that was pseudomonas. With MTB, it's going to be POTS disease. When um, TB is spread hematogenously, it can go to the bones and it can cause POTS disease. That is also osteomyelitis because it's an inflammation of the osteoid or the bone. So POTS disease is going to be due to MTB. If you are sexually active or if your patient is sexually active, then you're going to have uh, osteomyelitis due to septic arthritis. Okay, This one we all know. This is quite common. So if you're not sexually active, then go for Staph aureus. If you're sexually active, then go for Neisseria over Staph aureus. Okay? For Pasturella, it's usually going to be cat or dog bites. Okay? Not for having cats or dog around. Not for playing with them. It's cat or dog bites. Okay? Bites. Pasturella. And for Salmonella, this is, I'm sure everyone knows this. This is due to sickle cell. If you are a sickle cell patient, um, then the chance of he, you having osteomyelitis due to salmonella is going to be your number one. So let's say that uh, they give you a situation where you have a, a sickle cell patient and the patient is having osteomyelitis. You see it in the x-ray. Nice uh, round osteolytic lesion in the bone. And then they say that on culture from the blood, we saw, you know, gram-positive, catalase positive, coagulase positive drug, right? What's going to be your number one differential in terms of uh, the bug that is causing osteomyelitis? Are you going to pick salmonella? Absolutely not, because salmonella is a spirochete. It's not catalase and coagulase positive. They're directly telling you that that's staph aureus. So the point I'm trying to make is that you can have uh, infection from staph aureus even though the patient is sickle cell it doesn't have to be salmonella so be careful when you're picking this is the this is the pattern you're going to follow when there is nothing else and it's kind of directing you towards a certain you know, bug then you're going to pick that particular bug or else go for staph aureus